Well, since Senator John McCain's death, we've seen many headlines calling him an American hero or holding him up as a symbol of courage. But we've also seen some headlines saying that he was anything but. The senator's passing has given new life to an old smear. WBZ political analyst John Keller joins us. And John, this shows that fake news never really dies. Absolutely right, Liam and Paula, especially in an era when so many don't distinguish between real news and what they see on Facebook, Twitter, or pretend news sites. Witness the emails we've been getting from folks repeating a long disproven falsehood about the late senator. Suddenly, a bright flash rips across the aft portion of the deck. I felt this tremendous impact, not an explosion, but an impact that shook my entire airplane very severely. This 1967 fire on board the USS Forrestal was the worst aircraft carrier disaster in U.S. history. And in the wake of John McCain's death, an old persistent smear about it has resurfaced. Quote, he crashed three planes in a fit of rage and exited his cockpit to see why he had to wait to take off on a bombing mission, writes one viewer. In his haste, he hit the release, dropping his live bombs on the deck, and then ran. But according to the official Navy report on the incident, which found poorly maintained equipment at fault and extensive fact-checking by websites including truthorfiction.com, PolitiFact, FactCheck.org, and Snopes, None of that is true. But that hasn't stopped right-wing websites like this one from repeating those lies. Echoed yesterday in this viewer email, quote, he was responsible for the deaths of so many sailors aboard his aircraft carrier, end quote, because he presumably ignited the blaze with a grandstanding wet start, a claim the Navy dismissed as preposterous. The smear fits neatly into the narrative that McCain was mentally unbalanced before and after his years as a POW. It was peddled when McCain ran for president in 2000 and 2008. And in this internet-fueled era of manipulation, deceit, and gullibility, it has survived its victim. Now, we forwarded the fact checkers rebuttals uh, debunking this smear to the folks who repeated it in their emails to me, asking if it changes their view at all. None of them have responded so far. I'll certainly let you know if any of them do. As with so many other fake stories, there's overwhelming evidence that it's not true, and yet people continue to believe it. What do we do with that? Boy, that is a good question. I wish I had a snappy answer. I think, uh, I do think that people of goodwill who are just caught up in, and, and are confused, mm -hmm. uh, they are potentially reachable uh, by facts, by truth, and by the insistence on those by public officials, by journalists, and so forth. Uh, I'll tell you, though, uh, I think you've got to start looking at the schools and teaching kids how to tell the difference between fake news and real news. All right, John Keller, thank you very much. Paula, over to you. I did not an education story. Andover High School teaches their seniors and Absolutely. seniors to spot fake news. John and Liam, thanks so much.